welcome back to our channel bullets and bows sarah and jamie <laughs> what are we going to talk about today we're going to talk about things you wear underneath things you wear what hmm. is that a, a base layer, layer? <laughs> so today we're going to talk to you guys about some of our go-to base layers that we like to wear when we're out in the field and yep. we're going to cover everything from lightweight to midweight to heavyweight right so let's get started let's talk about the lightweight base layers the base layers that i have here are merino wool i really like merino wool because it is uh it'll wick away sweat but keep you warm and dry and it will not absorb a lot of odor so the first brand i'm going to talk about is icebreaker this particular icebreaker base layer is a three-quarter zip so long sleeved regular camel pattern uh, what I like about it is you can wear it by itself too so if it's pretty warm out and you only have the base layer on it'll help um, give you just a little bit of warmth but be really lightweight and fairly breathable um, and then this is the top then I also have the bottoms as well I normally don't wear a whole lot of um, base layers underneath my pants. I normally wear more to sleep in, like if I'm backcountry hunting. But this is another lightweight, um, just like a long john pant that I will sleep in. And it gives me just enough warmth again, but won't hold the odor. So I like to take something like this, especially if I'm um, backcountry hunting, things like that, lightweight. And again, it will not hold. Odor. So for my lightweight gear, Curls with Guns Performance T. It can be used as a base layer or just a outer layer as well. Or well, just a t-shirt. It has a nice logo on it and it's really light. I really like the spandex, like stretchy material. I don't feel like I'm being like a sardine in it. Uh, it does have a, a good cut to where I'm not sausage rolled in there. I also would wear this. It's by Kings. It is 100% polyester, so it does have some moisture wicking on there. It's a long sleeve camo shirt. It will hold some odor, but it's not anything too crazy. Hopefully, I don't stink that bad to, to hold in that much odor. And then for my bottoms, I actually just had a pair of Nike dry fit leggings. These ones are fleece lined, which is pretty nice. There are some that are not, that are a little bit... Uh, cooler I guess. I kind of have the opposite problem of Sarah. I get really cold easily and I stay cold so the more fleece or the more uh, insulation I have the better and that is what I used up until I started to get more invested into hunting and started upgrading my gear. Moving on to more of a mid-weight. All of my base layers now for more mid-weight are going to be by First Light. The first one which is my absolute favorite shirt to wear. It is the Women's Crew Long Sleeve T-shirt. It is in the camo pattern fusion. It is merino wool. It does have the thumb hole as well on it. I wear it a lot during elk season, especially if I'm hunting archery um, in Arizona. So it is thick enough and heavy enough to keep me just warm enough like in the cool mornings but when it is midday when it starts to get really warm I don't have to peel anything else off because this is perfect and it keeps me cool enough as well so if it is a little bit colder then I will wear it more as a base layer rather than a standalone shirt but this is my absolute favorite as for base layer pants I normally don't wear them underneath my regular hunting or hiking pants because Whenever I do hunt or hike, my legs always get really warm a lot quicker than my upper body for whatever reason. So I tend to feel like constricted. The women's base layer pant by First Light. I do want to mention that First Light does not carry the ASAT camel pattern anymore. And honestly, if you're wearing your base layers as a base layer, it doesn't matter if it's camel or not. So these are great. And then I also have a long sleeve, three quarter weight zip hoodie by First Light as well that I can wear as a base layer or standalone. And it does have the thumb hole also. So this is kind of nice if it's a little bit windy or if I want to um, keep my head covered for whatever reason. I have that. So 
I am in love with them. I've had these for four years now and they stand up to everything that I put them through. I love them, they're great. I would highly recommend them. So for me, I go straight from lightweight to heavyweight because I'm cold, so there you go. She's cold as ice. I was gonna say blooded, but oh, and that too. <laughs> I had been researching a lot on heavyweight base layers because like I said, I am cold frequently. So Sitka gear was like the highest rated stuff that I could find. When I was looking at the base layers, I wasn't really sure if I wanted the women's or the men's fit. So I decided to get one of each just to kind of compare and see which ones I like better. This is the women's heavyweight base layer. It has a thicker waistband, which is something I noticed kind of helps uh, keep your tummy warm and cover uh, up over your belly button if you want to be a little sucked in, which is kind of nice. Uh, it is really thick. It does have rib like lining on the inside, which is pretty nice. It is made from like a poly material, 91% polyester, 9% spandex, and it does have the polygene odor control technology. So it does help uh, suck you in and keeps the odor in too, which is pretty nice. And I also really like the pattern, the Optifade Elevated 2. Comparing it to the men's Sitka Heavyweight Bottoms, I did have to size down one from the women's. The waistband on the men's is a little bit different. You can see it's a, a little bit thinner compared to the the women's. Yeah, you can see there's a big gap. And I noticed too on your uh, base layer mm -hmm. uh, pants, they had the women's had a thicker waistband yeah, as well. Yeah, they did. Maybe that's just a preference thing or maybe because we got a little bit of a dunk and actually between the men's and the women's I found the women's to be much warmer versus the men's but for functionality fit feel everything I actually preferred the men's they do also have the same ribbing on the inside they have the the hole so you can go and I actually used that with my piece style and it worked. So that was kind of a, a major plus for me. So maybe if you do tree stand hunting, so yes. if you're in an area where maybe you whitetail hunt or you're bear hunting and you're able to sit in a tree stand, something like that may be a little bit better because you're not moving and you're not getting that blood flowing. And then also I got the matching tops for the base layer system. So this is the Selb Alpine pattern. It doesn't have like the same ribbing as the bottoms do but I do like that they are longer shirts so I'm covered from the bottom up no crack and from the top down like with my jacket or with my waders it didn't really like come up which oh, was really mm -hmm. nice and then the same thing for the optifade pattern identical style and functionality and makeup of it just a different color pattern so overall I really these are my go-to oh, and we've kind of covered everything from lightweight to heavyweight and also different price points too. So like the icebreaker that I talked about is going to be a little bit less expensive than the first light and the Sitka, kind of like your King's um, yes. shirt, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you were on a bit of a budget, don't feel like you have to buy top of the line, buy within your budget, but buy the best that you can and you'll be able to get out there. Be sure to like and subscribe and we will see you in our next adventure. Bye. Hello, YouTube. <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay. Um, I do need to upgrade. I don't need to talk about that. Anyway, they obviously have the... Which way am I looking here? There we go. <laughs> Let me do that over. We're going to start talking about our lightweight base... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> because... Heavyweight champion. <laughs> <laughs>